Hello, and today we're going to be reviewing the Ryobi P5452B TL 8 inch 18 volt pruning chainsaw. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, starting off at the rear of the tool, we have the battery slot. The battery slot will accept any of Ryobi's 18 volt batteries, but I personally would only recommend using 3 amp hour batteries or higher simply because this is using a brushed motor. You can use smaller batteries if it's a small job, but like I said earlier, if you want a better user experience, bigger batteries are the way to go with this particular tool. Now, there is a little bit of play when it comes to the battery slot in this particular tool, but I haven't had it drop any batteries, so I think it's still an acceptable performance. And I also do like having the battery slot located on the rear of the tool to provide you with a little bit more balance between the front and rear of the tool. So as far as I'm concerned, everything about the battery slot is acceptable. Moving on. Okay, next up we have the trigger and safety. Now the safety is located at the top of the tool and will need to be pulled back in order to activate the trigger. And it will have to be held in the well rear position while you're holding onto the trigger. This is a fairly standard design and there's nothing really exceptional here. They're both made out of plastic, the response time from the motor is fairly decent, it's a single speed or non-variable speed motor so you only have one speed to work with, and that's about it. It's a no frills, get, it gets the job done kind of approach, and that's perfectly fine. Moving on. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the grips on this particular chainsaw. Overall, the rear grip is a fairly standard Ryobi design. It has a nice rubberized texture and it's about the right size for everybody's hands, but it's still big enough that if you need to wear gloves, you have that option to work with. Now, the front grip is made out of a hard black plastic and is really only going to be useful for when you're cutting in a, well, vertical line. If you're trying to cut something on, those, on its side or on a horizontal line, it's going to be much more difficult to do that. And I would highly recommend maybe taking a look at another chainsaw if you're going to be making lots of cuts, well, you know, horizontally. But when it comes to the overall ergonomics, it's a fairly well-balanced chainsaw, at least when you have a larger size battery inserted in the back of it. And you can actually use that battery in the back to also hold on to if you have to. So as far as I'm concerned, everything here gets a pass. Okay, next up we have the onboard tool. Now the onboard tool is stored inside the forward grip and will allow you to adjust the tension of the chain or remove the clutch cover. It's basically just a very skinny wrench with a flathead screwdriver at one end and it gets the job done. It stays in place nice and securely when you are transporting the tool and I've never had an issue with it falling out. So as far as I'm concerned, everything here gets a pass. Okay. Back on the other side of the tool, we have the clutch cover as well as the tensioning screw. Now, the clutch cover is a fairly simple design. Just like on the 10-inch chainsaw, there is a single bolt holding in place, and in order to well, access the internals, you will simply remove that single bolt, and then you'll be able to take the cover off so that you can perform maintenance to clean, to change the bar out, or to change the chain, whatever you need to do. Everything on the inside of the uh, compartment here is fairly clean because there's no oiler, so it's definitely a much easier job to well clean than say on the 10 inch chainsaw. And if you do need to change out any parts here, it's fairly straightforward. So yeah, nothing to well complain about here. Now the sprocket is made out of metal, the bar is made out of metal, and of course the chain is made out of metal, so nothing to go wrong. Now the cover has the chain tensioning system built into it, so in order to adjust the tension of the uh, chain, you will have to have the cover in place every single time. And well, that's fairly standard, but we'll go over that here in a second. So when it comes to putting the cover back on, just make sure you have everything aligned just right and that the uh, holes in the bar fit into the tensioning system on the cover and it should go together fairly easily. And I really haven't had too many issues here. So yeah, let's go ahead and talk about tensioning the chain. Okay, in order to adjust the tension of the chain, you will simply take your onboard tool and slightly loosen up the bolt that holds on the clutch cover, and then you will be able to flip the tool or wrench around, and then you will be able to use the flat head end to adjust the screw, which controls the tension of the chain. In order to tighten the chain, you will rotate the uh, tool clockwise, and in order to loosen the chain, you will rotate it counterclockwise. Once you get done adjusting it to the proper tension, you will simply tighten down the main bolt again, and then you will be all set. I do kind of wish this was a toolless adjustment design, but unfortunately Ryobi doesn't implement them very well, and this is an improvement over the 10 inches chainsaws adjustment method, so we did get an improvement here. Moving on. Okay, next up we have the Ford handguard. Now the Ford handguard is actually necessary on this particular tool because of how much further forward the Ford handle is. So 
I, while I didn't think it was necessarily uh, important on the 10 inch chainsaw, on this particular saw, I'm glad they included it. And overall, it seems to be perfectly adequate for its job. It's fairly flexible, it's made out of plastic, and it will definitely protect your hands against a sapling that will come snapping back at your branch or something. So at the end of the day, I do appreciate having the handguard on this particular tool. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the bar scabbard and T-tip. Now the bar on this particular chainsaw, of course, is made out of metal and has uh, eight inches of space, or at least that's what it's supposed to have. I get about seven and a half inches of usable space when I measure it with a uh, tape measure. So it's definitely a little bit on the short side, unfortunately. So that's a little bit of a black mark against it, but I think it's still an acceptable performance since it's not under an inch but it'll be up to you to decide whether or not that qualifies for you. Okay, now when it comes to the next feature on this particular chainsaw, the T-tip, your usage will vary. I don't personally use the T-tip because it makes it impossible to put the scabbard on, and so I just find it to be a massive inconvenience. But if you are working close to the ground and you're worried about sticking the front of the chainsaw into the dirt, this might be a valuable feature to, well, install onto your chainsaw. You can use the onboard tool to install this particular feature, but at the end of the day, if you're like me, you probably won't even bother. So yeah, moving on to the scabbard. Okay, last but not least, we have the scabbard. The scabbard is made out of a black plastic and fits the blade properly, unlike the scabbard that came with my 10-inch Ryobi chainsaw. The scabbard stays in place, and I don't have any worries about it falling off. So yeah, at the end of the day, everything here is completely functional and gets a pass for me. Moving on. Okay, without a battery, the tool weighs 2,499 grams, which is about 5.5 pounds. And with a four amp hour battery, it weighs 3,220 grams, which is about seven pounds. Okay, let's talk about this particular chainsaw in use. Starting off with the ergonomics. The ergonomics of this particular chainsaw work just fine when you are dealing with a tree limb or a small tree. I didn't really have any complaints there. Where I do have a little bit of a complaint is when you're working right next to the ground, chopping out small saplings or brush, it seems to be a little bit harder to handle because that Ford grip isn't a wraparound handle, which means that you're going to have to find another part on the chainsaw in order to effectively grasp it. And for me, that was the battery pack. I found myself holding the battery pack an awful lot when I was using this particular chainsaw close to the ground. So yeah, I think that's a little bit of a disappointment, but it's not really a major problem since most people probably won't be using this particular chainsaw in the way that I was using it. Now, when it comes to the overall power, this chainsaw has enough torque to finish pretty much any job that you can put in front of it or that will fit onto its bar. But with that being said, it's definitely not going to win any races because it's a fairly slow cutter. It doesn't mean that it's not impossible to finish up your job in a timely manner, but if you are going to compare this against, say, a brushless chainsaw, it's probably not going to win any races. Okay, and when it comes to battery life, it really depends on what you're doing with it. If all you're doing is removing a limb or two, you know, a two amp hour battery should work. But if you are working on a large project, a couple of four amp hour batteries is advisable. And just also remember that it's using a brushed motor, so it's not going to be nearly as effective as a tool with a brushless motor. But with that being said, let's go ahead and move on to the pros and cons. And the first pro would be 18 volt. 18 volt means that this will work with all your Ryobi 18 volt batteries and you can adapt batteries over from other brands if you so choose to. Just remember you do that at your own risk. Smallish. Overall this is a fairly compact little chainsaw, which means that if you need to transport it or store it in a vehicle or take it somewhere, it's a lot easier than say a bigger 10 inch chainsaw. Moving on. Onboard tool. The onboard tool allows you to adjust the chain's tension, remove the cover, remove the bar, remove the chain, or to install the T-tip or remove the T-tip all with the same tool, which is a nice feature to have. Guard. Overall, the guard or T-tip is definitely a useful feature, and I can see how some people would appreciate it, even though I don't use it myself. And the first con would be chain tightening. It's not a horrible system, but I still prefer toolless chain tightening systems, and so that's why I consider it to be a con. And the next con would be the price. Overall, this is a fairly expensive little chainsaw coming in at $130. When you compare this against the competition, say something off of Amazon or Harbor Freight, this is an unrealistic pricing structure and it's something Ryobi probably should take a look at in the future if they want to keep selling these at a decent rate. Brushed. This is a brushed chainsaw, which means you don't have the brushless mode that would give you more runtime and more power. 
And quite frankly, for the price you're paying for it, it really should be brushless. Usable bar. Overall, you have seven and a half inches of, of the bar that are usable. So you are a little bit short of that eight inch mark. I don't think it's that big of a deal, but Ryobi definitely has a habit of, well, not exactly having the proper length of usability when it comes to the design of their bars. So this is just something that you need to keep in mind. And that is it for the pros and cons. Final thoughts on this particular chainsaw. I really want to like this particular chainsaw. I do like using this particular chainsaw. And if it was more affordably priced, it would be recommendable. But unfortunately, priced at $130, it's not recommendable. If you can pick this up during Ryobi days for, you know, $100 with two batteries and a charger, then it would be completely recommendable. But as it stands right now, Ryobi is being completely unrealistic in the pricing structure, and there's just too many other brands that offer chainsaws at a more affordable price that come with a battery and a charger. So as it stands right now, this is not going to be a recommendable tool. However, if Ryobi does reconsider their current pricing structure on this particular saw and offer it below the $100 mark or at the $100 mark with a battery and charger, then it would become recommendable. But until then, give this particular chainsaw a pass. And that is it for this video. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe, and we will see you next time. God bless.